Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. It is April 9th, and today we have something a little bit different in the VR lab. I'm I'm wearing multiple hats. Uh, we're doing a collaboration with the Video Game Development Club at NC State. And you don't mind me, sorry, everything's a little wonky. I'm trying to see everything at literally the same time. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're doing Today we're doing a collaboration with NC State, and it's none other than myself at the moment. Uh, I'm the communications officer, uh, current communications officer, and also president-elect for the Video Game Development Club. So I'm going to be talking about uh, showing off the club a little bit. Uh, I'm going to play through some of our games and talk about the development cycle of those games. Uh, and into any questions you guys may have. And then later, at the end of my uh, the game showcase, uh, I'm going to be popping into a di our Discord to chat with one of our, um, our actually vice president-elect, who is currently working on some development for a small game that he's making and refining for our uh, video game development club awards that are coming up soon. So it's going to be a very exciting day. Uh, so feel free to drop any questions you may have in the chat. To start, uh, I'm going to talk about, this is the vgdc.org website. Uh, it's our basically our club homepage. We spent a lot of time over the summer trying to get it up to par. Happy Friday, Claire. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, so we spent a lot of time really trying to make a, a home landing page for our, our club that was not the schools getting involved, which was a little bit more limited than we appreciate, like wanted out of it. But So we managed both. So this we made this with Google, uh, I think Google Sites, yeah, in case you're curious. But we have our club promo, which I'll watch in a second. And then we have, uh, typically we meet on Wednesdays here in the VR lab. Uh, this is why we're very close to the the libraries here, and we normally have workshops throughout the semester, but it's wrapping up the semester right, right now, so we don't have any more workshops planned except for like the awards and a game night, and, and this will be a workday most likely. We're still figuring this one out. But we also have uh, our, a YouTube channel, which I'll go over to in a minute, um, and itch.io, which is where we upload our games, and then on GitHub for people to download additional code and repositories. So I'm going to go over to the YouTube first. Uh, this is our YouTube channel. We at the VDDC. Uh, I'm going to drop this link in the chat. Yeah, Club Promo is very... I'm going to center this since I don't have it full screen. Um, excuse my on-the-fly editing. <laughs> there, there we go. And put that up. There we go. Okay, I can't full screen it because I have to be able to see the chat. So please, please bear with me. But here at the uh the VGDC, we do have our own YouTube cha page. We upload workshops on uh whenever we do them. So as part of we're trying to do our accessibility and outreach. Uh, initiative we do try to um, we we record our workshops and most of them have been done over zoom we used to have in-person workshops before covid so you can see those down here uh, we'd gather in the vr lab and host it on a little big tv that's behind me uh, so that was always fun and then we have trailers for our, our games and i won't go through all of them but we'll watch the promo in a moment um, and then most of here are um, here are our workshops, our more recent ones that we've been putting up from when we've been doing Zoom COVID, because we do meet get, meet every week over Zoom right now. Yeah, you can get a sense of the club even if you can't make it, because you know we'd like to be able to have resources available for members. It's some feedback we've gotten in the past. Uh, we used to be a very a uh, club that was very much project oriented, and a lot of it was difficult for member new members to come in who weren't sure what they wanted to do yet. So we started doing workshops um, within the past year and a half, I think, to try to give members some foundational steps within game development. 
So this one right here is actually a 2D art workshop that I did. We've got some rigging and modeling workshop. This one's specifically for rigging, which is how you get a 3D model. Like you make a skeleton for the 3D model, and then that's how you can get it to move and do animations. Uh, and that was a follow-up to the intro of the Blender, which is an open source uh, 3D modeling tool. So that's how this intro the modeling, essentially. And we have a, a few of those. Uh, this is from last semester, so we build off of them. And then we have some intro the Unities and programming, since that can be a little bit daunting, especially for non-programmers. Um, and then sometimes we have speaker series. So this is Justin Johnson from, let's see, you see me in that little preview. It's Justin Johnson from uh, the art and design department. He uh, has a very extensive game background, so we asked him to come and have a have a meeting with us. Of course, we have other speaker series. Just we can't record all of them and put them on YouTube. Um, recently, we had Ian Fraser from. Um, star, uh, he worked on. He used the creative. He really used the intro the Unity. I mean, well, I recommend. Uh, maybe you could check out one of our Intro the Unity workshop where there's a lot of resources we, we talk about. Uh, we link to Brackies and we have, we're working on a resources page for our uh, our website right now. That's definitely going to be a summer project. Um, but yeah, so we had Ian Fraser, who is the creative director of Star Wars Squadrons, which is like a VR flight game. He came to talk to us and we had like a three hour long this Q&A, honestly. <laughs> um, so he was really nice, and then we had one of our alumni from Bethesda, which makes the Fallout games and the new uh, Deathloop and like Skyrim and things, so she came and talked to us as well. So it's, it's very nice, so we put all of our, our work here, but I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to watch our promo, because it'll be a good introduction to the, the games we make. So let me know if the audio's too quiet. Thank you, Oculus, for the store notification. <laughs> let me know if the audio's too, too quiet. Uh, there we go. We've had a lot of good guest speakers. There, you know, we try we try to get as as many as we can from alumni to to outreach. Uh, so it's always a work in progress, but we do our best to bring in industry speakers so that um, club members can get can get a chance to make to network with people in the industry and and ask questions and you know, no, learn what it's like to actually work in the game industry, because it's, it's pretty, it's pretty competitive, and it's pretty rough, um, to get into, and it's, we don't really, you know, as a game designer, a lot of us don't really have a guide, it's like, this is how you get this job, no, no one really knows how to do that, there's no specific path for that, so a lot of it, so we try to, uh, give as many tools to club members as, as we possibly can. And it, it's always a work in progress, you know, we can always expand and add more tools. But okay, so here's our club promo. It's gonna have a few of the game, a lot of the games that are, I'm gonna be playing today. So that that's our don't don't start the workshop. That's our promo. That is, that is us at the VGDZ. So we would appreciate you know subscribing to our YouTube channel. <laughs> so I say that so we can uh we can change the URL to be something more pretty. <laughs> but, um yeah, you feel free to come and visit us on our, our weekly meeting. You can uh you know get get in contact with us on our email here, and then you can join our mailing list. Uh, we don't really have a, a thing to set up here yet, but you can always email us and we'll add you to the to the mailing list if you're interested. So I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to go on the itch page. We're going to look at that. And I'm going to play the games 
in chronological order for the most part. Uh, so I'm going to start from what's the oldest game that I at least worked on, or at least know part of the development story for it, and then we're going to work up to the most recent game. And I, I didn't work on all of these games. Uh, I knew most of the people, uh, I know people who worked on these games, so I'm going to do my best to tell their development story for the most part. Um, but of course, yeah, I'm, only, I'm only one person, um, so... But we're gonna start with I'm just making sure I didn't get any mention. Which one is my favorite? Ooh. Ooh. What is my favorite game? Okay, I'm gonna say like on this page that we've actually uploaded. I haven't played me Messenger, but that one looks pretty fun. Um I think in terms of being complete I do really enjoy hit cone here. Uh, I think that one's really fun, and it's a pretty solid game loop in terms of, like, being complete. They're, they're all fun. Uh, I have some games that I don't have on here that we just haven't uh, put. That'll also be a summer project to update the itch with even more games that we've made in the past year. Uh, we made, over winter break, I made a kind of like a Santa dating sim, is what I'm going to describe it as. So, like, you're a new worker at the North Pole, and <laughs> you kind of, like basically save Christmas and then like you can romance either Bernard or Santa or Krampus or um the abominable snowman or Jack Frost and on and that was like that's probably one of my favorite projects just because I know I want to see it too I'll we're working on getting us so we'll make the itch page also over the summer so you know maybe we'll show I'll send you a link or I'll show it off next another time. But that's probably one of my favorite games. It's also the, one of the more complete games I've made. So, uh, at least off the top of my head. Um, but okay. Now I'm going to get to playing. We're going to play VGDC Endless first. This was the game that... Uh, it's a VR kind of endless shooter type of a game. So, if you imagine like an endless runner, which is Temple Run, basically. If you're familiar with that type of genre... Um, it's that, but in VR, and it's kind of sci-fi. And this was the first game I worked on. Um, I'll play the trailer. Oh, I don't know how this is about to work. Let me just pop Yeah, I'll just play the trailer. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to play the trailer and talk about it. So this game was an endless runner, and it was the first one I worked on, so I helped with a lot of the initial concept art for this, uh, prison. So I did a lot of the initial concept art for the the prison that we're going to. So I'm going to boot up the game um, in a moment, and then I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, I'm also going to know I'm not going to be able to see the chat like while I'm in VR as I normally do. So, um, oh my god, what did I click? No, don't click. Okay. So it'll be a... Uh, so I'm a, it'll it'll it's gonna look weird as I pop in and out of VR to look at the chat, um, because I'm on a different headset right now that can actually run. You should comment now, please comment into the void. I'll come back out of the void to to look. All right. Oh headset, come on, let's go. There we go. All right. Here we go. I'm gonna double check that everything is fine. This is what happens when you're like one person running a stream. Okay, we're good. Here we go. So yeah, this, this is a uh, VGDC Endless. Uh, I'll check the chat in a couple moments. So, uh, my role in this game, I hope it's not too loud. <laughs> I'll check the chat to see if it's too loud in a second. Oh wow, that's what happens when I pause it. That's good to know. Um, 
so my role in this game was I helped design like this kind of space prison, which is really what you are. Um, you just your point is like you're the story is that you're a prisoner and your chance of escape is if you can survive the the tunnel. But obviously it's uh it's endless, so you, you know you're never gonna really get out. But you know helped with the prison design and the general trying to do the concept. Uh, a friend of mine did this little ray gun here. Pretty fancy and it shoots. This was made in the Unreal Engine. Uh, and then we have this platform that you sit on. And then I'm gonna sit over here. Shoot this. I'm gonna do one round and then I'll check the chat again. So let's see how far, I did like one practice round last night but I'm not terribly great at this game. The concept is that you want to shoot the shell, shell Ooh, to break the door. And then you get a charge bar. charge bar like the more accurate you are and obviously I'm not that accurate I got 40 percent I did better than yesterday basically this is as good as I got yep there we go you shoot down there and there we go alright I'm gonna come back to the chat It's a little loud. Okay, I'll fix it. There we go. I lowered the, the volume a bit, so hopefully it won't get too bad. But yeah. So let's go over another round. Yeah, this is all made in Unreal. And this is about, this is a long development cycle. Um, I think it took us about a year and a half to really complete this into a manner. Most of it was balancing, I think, the game itself with the cells and then making it interesting. Like the charge bar. Was definitely not in the original design. And you know, I had a 100% charge bar, but I don't really know how to activate it. <laughs> but I got to 100% and we got level 10. That's pretty good. I think the record, maybe for this build, is uh, is level 13. It is, the, uh, is the club record, which is pretty impressive. You know, unfortunately, we didn't put like a control... A control option in here, it's, you know, the hindsight would have been. I wonder if we listed on the on the page. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna check see if we put that charge option on the actual Oculus. Any of the face buttons. Okay, so it's yeah, we did put it. We had game instructions that I didn't read. All right, let's see. Do you get tired aiming forward so much? Yeah, it can be pretty tiring uh, like this. So I kind of keep my arms in like a little wing position. One, to steady my shot. And then two, to, uh, you know, kind of keep him rested. Let's see if we can get 100%. I got to be really accurate here. Ah, there's the bomb and you just destroy the door. Ah. 
Ah! <laughs> there we go, we made it a little bit higher. So yeah, that's uh, that's endless. That's pretty much the entire game loop. You get a little bit bad. That's not how I spell my name. You get a little bit better every time, basically. We get to show off the bomb there. But yeah, it's a, this was the first game I worked on, and it's pretty it's pretty exciting. You know, let's uh let's see if we can get to eleven. One more one more round, and then I will move on. It's actually you can't hit the thing until you pass through the door. It seems. Wow, this is a lot. And uh, it's randomly generated. Oh, I was like, oh, I should totally, I was saving the bomb. Hold on, hold on, that was a bad run. I was saving the bomb for like, you know, when I would desperately need it and I thought I could make it. See, the trick is, is that it won't, it doesn't seem to trigger the shot until you pass through the last door. So you're just wasting your shot. Otherwise. Not gonna make it, not gonna make it, not gonna- Ah, oh, That's okay. Alright, that's good, that's enough of that. Alright. That's endless. That's my- that's my- my secret dev tips for that. It's a very- it's a nice- it's a very fun game. I'm gonna put this in the, uh... In the boundary. Oh wait, I don't think it's out of me. Oh yeah, as you do see endless, that was the first- the game. We uh, we made and it's pretty fun. So the next one we made uh, that's on here that actually I also developed was a game called Spring Fever, and this is a game that it's a 2D bullet hell is what the genre is called. So if you are a a no, if, if it's Q E N R is what I'm going I'm going to loop this one up really quick. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm really, I'm all quiet. Hold on. Anyway, this is complicated. <laughs> it's the complicated switching between VR and also not VR. <laughs> Let me tell you. Okay. Everything good? Good. Okay, yeah, I had put the headset on the floor and I um I made sure that uh that I was making making sure we could stay in the boundary area, but also it has my mic. So I plugged in my backup mic. So so I can play the desktop games. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna load this one up. Alright, there it is. So this is Spring Fever. Uh, I don't know which mic it's really reading right now, but that's gonna be okay. So your your nose, this little nose. I did the background on this one, and then another artist did the tree, and then another artist def definitely did the nose, and like the assets that you'll see within it would was split among even more artists. But basically, your nose trying to survive spring and it is a walking nose uh you're trying to avoid all oh, this the silkworms here and the the dandelion and yeah and then we're dead i'm gonna take a minute to highlight this soundtrack because it's the my this is my favorite soundtrack of, of games we've made Oh my god.
There we go. It's 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 the favorite soundtrack. So we only got seventeen points, so we can't afford anything. But um, yeah, Jackson Boston is uh, who did this. He did great. He made like a digital. We always talk about how he made a digital flute squeak, which is an impressive feat. I don't know what the trick to this game is, other than maybe just standing in the middle here is the safe zone. Except that then the silkworms come to annihilate you. Very unsophisticated honk. You can also jump. Uh, I'm trying not to die. Oh man. Oh man, all the pollen. There's me jumping. Oh, sorry, I clicked out of it. So how many points? Alright, we can have rain. Rain is a good one. I think you only need to buy it all once. So rain is gonna wash everything away. Like the rain does and washes all the green pollen away. Absolute nightmare. Okay, I didn't get to use it. Yeah, it is really just as hard as making it through pollen week in the real world. That's why we made it- I can't believe it. That's why we made it a bullet hell. <laughs> it's just real difficult. It's very unbalanced. We made this going. There's the rain. We didn't get the rain sound effects, like, effects going in, but, you know, that was good enough. Like, we made this during a game jam, which was a, a weekend. It was basically a weekend of three days of just game development. And it, it, the programmer had so much workload, because basically it was, like, four artists and a, a sound designer and one programmer. So he had so much art to work with, and then it was just... The programmer. The programmer didn't sleep. <laughs> so, like, good on him. I don't know what speed up is gonna do, or how that's gonna help me, but I'm gonna buy it. I guess it's still rain. There's also bugs, because it was made in a weekend. This is not at all polished. Oh my god. Well, I activated the rain again. That's fine. Whee! Also, it doesn't matter where where the dandelions the dandelions are. It'll spawn from the set. It's not the most balanced game, but you know it's fine. I don't think we're gonna get to. Inv I mean, I could save up for invincibility. Let's see if I can survive long enough to get invincibility. I I keep my rain, which is good. Oh my god, there we go. That okay. What are we at? 45? Alright, I didn't do anything. I don't know how score is calculated. It might be time based. Oh man. But I really don't know. Get out of here, silkworm. Get out of here. Oh. The rain is an ability. So we have up here, we have like this Q, and I purchased it in the shop, and I guess it's permanently purchased. So when I hit Q over here, uh, we get the rain. And I think R is one of these i don't know what it is <laughs> and then time and slow time I, I don't remember what they are i'm gonna try to save up for the invincibility to play one round is that oh my goodness i'm awful at this game get out of here silkworm i don't know what it hit me but that's fine all right we're at 70 we're almost there hope you enjoy the uh this flute this never-ending flute There we go. I think it's better over here. And the tuber, we got a tuber in the back too. Ow, oh, almost. Okay, I have my score in the bottom left actually. What do we have? Almost. One more round. I gotta get at least nine points. I can manage nine points. Silkworm, I need you to go away everybody. All right, we're there. Yeah, I get rain. I get the. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I get the rain once per round. So now we have invincibility! Let's see how that goes. I guess it's that one. So now that I bought invincibility, I have like this R ability, which I'll activate. Let's see what happens. Well, I don't know if invincibility works. <laughs> 
gonna activate it right off the bat. I don't know how invincible, but uh, that's, that's a spring figure. It's not the most polished game, but it's pretty fun. And it was a fun game to make. This is like my first time doing pixel art background, so that was a good experience. And I really enjoy doing pixel art uh, now. So, moving on. We have... The next uh, one on the block is... Actually, I'm going to go... We have Hit Cone and Bite Size Bonanza. But Hit Cone is a part of Bite Size Bonanza, so I'm going to move right into uh, Bite Sized. Oh, uh, there it is. And I gotta pull up chat on my phone really quick because this one's full screen and I can't do anything about that. <laughs> no, okay. So this is Bite Size Bonanza. And um, basically what this project was is for, I think it was the fall... Was it fall 2020? Might have been fall 2020. Might have been. I think so. It was like actually COVID. Uh, so for this one, we wanted, we were trying to, this is the middle of us restructuring the club. And we decided that we would try to split the new members into groups and have them make a game, a small game to be put into a mini game type structure by the end of the semester. Um, and so this is all this is the games and our theme was space so it was kind of like a game jam but for an entire semester so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna double, double check in okay great everything's everything's working so we're gonna play hit cone first this one was made by joseph da silva and you're a hard-working traffic cone struggling to make ends meet and you're willing to do whatever it takes to get your family off the streets Locate your targets in this busy city where everyone has a distinguishing hat and eliminate them. But be warned, your benefactor will only cover up the assassins they order. Take out someone who's not your target and you'll suffer a fate worse than poverty. So this game was actually made in a previous game jam uh, by Joseph. And he polished it up a little bit to put it in bite-sized. So here we go. This is, this is me and my cone. This is my house. And if we go over here, actually, we have... My lovely cone wife and cone children. This is my family. So we can uh we can jump and slice and you know, woo to do a spin chat. So we're looking for somebody with like a what looks like a binky hat. I think it's this man. There we go. And the sound effects in this are actually wonderful and you use, lose money over time so we gotta see if I oh they're colored oh he colored the hats no he didn't yes he did there we go no he did not color the hats was that one it no this is more of like a top hat so we gotta find somebody with the, t the stuck on the edge no you have a trap cone it's a trap cone imposter who's this one it's not that guy. Somebody here has a very nice top hat. And it is none of these people. I think it is the pilgrim hat man who's running around the lake. We gotta go get him. It's for the family, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sure you have your own family. Oh, I missed him. I don't know why this is what happened to this police car here. It's very much anarchy. He is faster than me. Okay, he's gonna come back around. He's coming around. I'm going to get him this time. Right here. Nope. Oh, I meant no. I'm also not good at this game. Joseph, though. Jo I've seen... Ah! Joseph and Alberto, two, two other club members, are very good at this game. Oh, my God. I'm actually the worst. Oh, Aerial Slice is worth a lot more money. Would be great if I could if I could do it. Ah, this one always gives me a hard time. 
There we go. Okay, I got him in the back. What do we got? We got someone with some fuzzy hair. Not that guy. Not that guy. This guy. Oh. Where's he going? He's gonna come back? Oh no. Pretty sure it's this guy. He's got the fancy he's got that fancy uh helmet. Oh, I killed the wrong somebody. Well, that's unfortunate. I really thought it was that guy. Hello. Oh, I see. I see that uh, chat is not working on my phone, and I love to see it. This is my my favorite thing. Yes, this is played with this is played with a keyboard, and I think you can play it with the controller. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up with chat. Yeah, this game is really fun. It's easy to be a walking nose in a floating traffic cone. Yeah, possibly. All right, let's go try that again. We got the man with the polo hat. I don't remember where I saw him. Is that guy? That was kind of square. It could be this guy. Oh, it's definitely this guy. All right, let's get him. He goes around this way. Ah, got to get him in the corner. There we go. All right, we got man with a really big top hat now. Okay, hold on, gotta find him. I see him, he's growing, he's going out. He just goes this way? He just goes back and forth here. Okay, and we got Pilgrim Hat Man, which was, all oh, the man running around over here. There he is. He's coming. I can't believe I can't ever get, I can't ever get Pilgrim Hat Man. <laughs> He is my nemesis. Come back here, Pilgrim Hat Man. I mean, I wouldn't either if somebody was trying to kill me, if a traffic cone was trying to kill me, but you know I need it for my family, too. All right, he goes this way. I cannot get him. Oh, why am I so bad at this? Specifically this man. <sighs> Come here, man. Maybe it's like I try. Oh, I got stuck. I got stuck on something. Oh, I was so perfect. I was gonna, I was gonna get him. All right, let's go over here. I go past him is my problem. Also, these are some like really nice tree assets that Joseph has. Like I go right past where he's going to stop. Let's see if I can get him to stand in front of him. Just gonna stand right in front of him. There we go. Okay, great. Okay, we gotta get fuzzy haired man. Fuzzy do. See, the hard part is that you could just stab, stand right in front of him. What? I sli Oh, I can't believe. I'm pretty sure that was fuzzy haired man. There is a way to win this, guys. Trust me. I know. I know. I have seen it done. Get him, get him. It's a fun. It is. I know. <laughs> Dang it! Oh, yeah, I know. So okay, one more try, one more game. This is a this was a fun game. This is probably one of the more. Um, it's also a really good VGDC game. Let's see. Uh, all right, we got man with the. No, uh, that's cheese man. You're I don't know. You're now. Sometimes it's hard to tell what hat they have. All the police are over there, because maybe this man is actually. Oh, yeah, this is Dino Hat Man. I killed Dino Hat Man by mistake. My bad. There he goes. Oh, oh, he just goes back to his path. Well, that's pretty neat. Glad I could break the game and it fixed itself, you know? <laughs> there we go. All right. Tall Top Hat Man. I don't know where. I think he was over here. He is. He's just going back and forth over here. He's difficult. Because there's a bunch of other people that cross paths with him. 
oh, Pilgrim Hat Man is always, always Pilgrim Hat Man. It's, he's gonna be the death of me. And my family. Ah! So you always swing to the left. So I have to position myself to be ready to swing when he's on or get his knees or something. One of the two. Okay, he's gonna, he's coming. He's coming. I'm just, hmm. Come here. Come here. <laughs> I know exactly what his route is, but I cannot execute it. Did you jump over me, sir? You're not allowed to do that. Oh, I gotta take out the graduate. How sad. He's gonna come back. He'll come back. Where is he going? He go the other does he go the other way? Guess he's going the other way. And then we have strained polo hat man. I feel, I hope, okay. I, you, you only have to kill five people, so I would like to get this, the last guy. Hold on, I gotta make sure my target is, it's not, it's not, it's not the guy. I think it's the guy over here. Yeah, it's this guy. We can get it. We can get it. Ah, oh, come here. There we go. Oh no, we gotta get Cheese Man. Gotta get Cheese Man. I have to feed my family! Okay, you gotta make sure nobody else is gonna come. Yeah! Oh, I didn't make enough cash. I think you actually have to get 12,000. So I spent too long chasing down Polo Hat Man. <laughs> Your children and wife will continue to live in an alley at the rate I'm making cash. So yeah, maybe you can do better than I can. But this is Hit Cone, so this was a pretty fun one. Uh, Joseph also made this during. Uh, it's, it's a good one. I'll link it in. I'll link this specific game in the in the chat real quick. Uh, but Joseph spent the spent the good. I tried. I tried to feed my family. I did my best. I I worked so hard. Let's see, this is, this is Hit Cone. Okay, but yeah, but Joseph did a lot of really good work on this one. It's, uh, he made this also in a weekend and then polished it a little bit afterwards. So, but the core concept was born in about three days and he had a very, he had a working game at the end of that, that game jam. Uh, so it's, it's a really, it's a really good game. It's like the theme itself was, uh, it, it was Traffic Cone, actually. It was the theme. So you decided to make a Traffic Cone assassin. And it, it's, it's pretty good. So, okay. We're going to continue on. Let's see. Exit the menu. And Bite Size Bonanza. So now we're going to play uh, Reload R. Which one? This one was made by Alberto. And it just have... So usually games have like an auto-reload type of system. But the gimmick with this one is that you have to press R to reload. Uh... So let me see. There we go. And this was pretty simple. So it's a, it's a nice gimmick though. Woo! Let the go kamikaze and try to lure them towards me. There we go. <laughs> they, they go out in a spectacular fashion. But yeah, now I'm reloaded. And then we have this great meme. It's all coming together now. Alberto spent a couple days, so like you shoot and then you run out, so you have to press R. So it takes about four presses to fully reload your gun, which is a neat mechanic, or at least add-on, to the typical um, shooter mechanic of, you know, you, <laughs> you, you auto-reload. So it adds a little bit of complexity to the genre, so it's, very, it's a very neat concept. Like each frame's got an individual animation, which programming-wise, I'm not sure how he accomplished. So that's an interest. It's a, it's a good feat in it of itself. Kazoo! Yeah. 
So the next one is uh, Interla- Intergalactic Golf, which was made by uh, Will, Makila, and Bailey. Uh, and this one's a very small... <laughs> it's a study in human psychology and sports, is what this game is. The audio in this is pretty great. They record. The audio in this is like they recorded the audio from the perspective of like you're an alien doing a uh, school report on American sports, and if you could hear in that beginning, they uh, combined a bunch of different sports into one thing that wasn't ultimately golf. Let's see if we can get over there. Oh, okay, well, I made it somewhere. Nope, I'm gone. Goodbye. Glad I get a free. I'm trying to make it over here. Of course. What is an astronaut's favorite food on the Earth? Seaboard. I do not know the answer. The space bar. I do not understand this joke. I do not understand the joke. <laughs> that was a good joke, though. The space bar. It's an astronaut's favorite key. I'm gonna play golf how it's meant to be played. But because gravity is a little wonky, because it's space golf, you you could there's a way to get hole in one. I just don't know how to do it. So I like we got this camera works pretty well. I can't see anything, but yeah, I got in the tunnel. I like the model for this though. This model is very space like, and it it looks real good. So then there we go. Now here, this was done specifically by Michaela. I know. And this whole gimmick was, quite frankly, I think a glitch. So if you move the camera around, like, the material changes. So you can, different. it comes into view at different parts. So it makes this really nice trippy wall effect of you gotta go really close to see where you're going. There we go. And that was, they didn't mean to do that, but that was like, sometimes bugs. Oh god. Turn into really great features, as I say, as I break the game. I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. Well, this isn't supposed to happen. Let me go down. Okay, great. This is what's supposed to happen. <laughs> sometimes bugs turn into features, and sometimes bugs are just bugs. <laughs> There we go. Okay, I gotta get over here. Listen, guys, I'm not good at golf. Just leave, just leave me be. Going down we go! The dynamic uh, gravity in this game, so it's really good. Like, each object has its own type of gra gravity, I think. Uh, around we go. A little bit, a little bit more. There's the hole. There it is. Still. There we go. And this, although the music in this was created by uh, Bailey Atwood, who was also the one working on this. Um, and I'm pulling up my, my Twitch chat. Uh, I don't. So you can find, I think the music is linked on the itch page. Oh, is it a little too quiet? I'll, I'll turn it back up. Sorry. The volume in the games is, uh, the, the glitch really did work out. I'll play it again. That way you guys can run through the audio. Space golf will be ten times more fun than Earth golf. It really is. You can make a whole you can make a whole game by making I think eccentric golf courses, and um, and and just having it be in space. Like your creativity could be li limitless. All right, so I'll check. Um, 
Sorry, let me know how the audio is. Is this audio okay? audio in OBS. Turn it down just a little? Okay, okay. Let me, let me go into it. I do not know if you have played golf before, but it is pretty simple. You see, you use a bat to hit the ball called a puck into the hoop, resulting in a first down. Is that comprehensible? Alright, yeah, what's important here you though is like- You have not responded, so we will interpret that as a yes. Yeah, the main game is really what's the important part here, so I'm gonna just keep it. I think it's a little bit quieter in the main game. Is this okay? That's good. Yeah, the game, the front. Let's see if we can make it over there. Nope. Ouch. A home run. That is going to be 32.4 points off of the final score counter. But if you get a fumble, you get those 32.4 points back. And a free freeze dried ice cream sandwich. We were like, oh, 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 one well, over here now. That's fine. Now we can hear this. So the music in this was uh, created by uh, Bailey Outward, who was also a part of this team. We're gonna go over there. There's a way to play this game not properly. There we go. Okay, we made it over here. I am impressed by the ability of this human. As am I. To be truthful, I had expected them to hit an air but ball low. by this point. Hitting an air ball would certainly be a bad time. Certainly. Oh, there we go. That was too, a little bit too strong. The music is a bot. Bailey does some great music. Bye. Uh, yeah! Wow, look at I this grade! I have learned a lot about the strategies utilized in golf <laughs> Thank thanks you. to our observations. Thank you, human, for participating in our research project for our secondary schooling assignment on human psychology. Yeah, I wanted to show off the music and the audio a little bit better that time. And also, you can uh, play it again. But it's a really fun game. Uh, this one's also part of Bite Size Bonanza is how you can play it. So, uh, but yeah, Bailey does some great music. Uh, you might be able to get... Uh, I'll have to check. Let me check really quick if the music... I don't know if he has this soundtrack specifically uh, re released. Let me... Uh, I don't think so, but I think it would be good for him to put it up. So I might ask him to put the soundtrack at least uh, on the page. The auto script is really funny. It has a has a lot of uh, it's really good. It has got a lot of character in it. So this one is called "M Explode" by Trevor Nolan, and this one, um, you know, this is more of like a tech demo in a way, but it can do some interesting stuff with gravity. So we get press R right to detonate and Q to swap fire mode. So this one is a proof of concept, but uh, because he didn't really have a lot of time to work on it, but it's still a neat uh game. And I hope it's not going to be too loud. I'm actually going to turn it down just in case it is really loud. Because I know that it has been really loud before. There we go. Yeah, it's still really loud. Hopefully that was good for you guys, I think. Uh, it's not a lot of music. So I'm just going to turn it down in general. They're great. So this one, how it goes, is that you can shoot these little balls. And, well, that cube is a shatter cube. So it's also an experiment with different meshes. So this one's pretty good. So this whole mesh uh, shatters whenever you you touch it, and it, it's really it's really a neat effect. That's a good particle effect. And then this one actually slows you down when you move through it. Or at least one of this one does, and then this one seems to be normal, which is okay. And then if we go up here, we can uh, somehow we're gonna have to get 
There we go. We can push the platform along. So I got to get it to bounce all the way back over here. So let's see if I can. Get it to come over here. There we go. Yeah, so this is a good example of building a proof of concept. So a good programming technique is to do is a, what's called a tech demo. And this would be a very uh, solid tech demo. You have a basically a playground to test out different functions of your mechanics. Uh, so you can test out uh, the physics of this platform being moved. You can test out the mechanic of that exploding uh, mesh over there. And also this mesh that affects the player movement. And it's uh, it's pretty neat pretty good and that one bounces back fairly well and that one's a bouncy one which is a good one so this is like a good example of like what you can do as a programmer or an artist even you can make a tech demo of a level uh, this would be gray blocking a level so okay we got one more game in bite size this one's called duck and you've acquired a device that can shift and alter the laws of gravity use this device to solve puzzles and escape so this was made by many people. Here we go. We have this gun can do different triggers, so we can we can pull it something towards us. It's a fascinating optical illusion. So I think left yeah left click we can push it. Where did it go? Where did where did it no come back ball come back. Go, I think, gotta, come here, ball. Come here. And go that way. No. That way. Oh, my God. And that way. That way. Up the ramp. There we go. Okay, perfect. And then this one's got to go over there. Oh, wow, look, that's trippy. This is not the same thing. Hold on. It lied to me. Maybe I can just take this. Great. I don't think I'm supposed to be able to do this, but this is how I'm going to... I don't think this is going to work. I probably just broke it by doing this. Huh. <laughs> Let's see if I can like get it to be go up. Nope. Hold on. Leave it to me to break the game. I'm not supposed to be able to take it out. I don't think I should. That is not the solution. Hold on. Go over there. I need you to get back in the window. Come here. This way. Come back. Okay, I'm just gonna restart it. <laughs> this is not This is not how you play. Ball said not today. Yeah, the puzzles are pretty solid. Alright, let me let me do this again, but better. I think I have to just like push it just slightly, right? And gotta catch it. No, come here. There we go. This is how you do it. That mirror effect is really cool though. I didn't know oh god. Oh my god, stay in there. Okay, great. I didn't notice that one before. Can I get you from over here? No, not quite. I'm gonna put that 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 way. No, I think push. Yeah, push it. Go that way. There we go. All right, day two. You won't tell anybody, thank you. Yeah, he does have his other music out, out there, and it's really good. Okay, Q is anti-gravity mode. Oh, there we go. X is lock to gun. I don't know what that means. We got another duck over there. There, perfect. Alright, I got day three. 
And then we got, okay, so we have, we got to put the switches in there. We have another duck. So I think I got to use my gravity mode. Did I read the instructions well? No. No, I didn't. There's a way to reverse it. Hold on, let me find the button. <laughs> I didn't read the instructions. Q is, Q is anti-gravity mode. Oh, okay, it's right click. Right click goes does the thing. Back to normal mode. Well, now I need to not shoot in this mode. Okay, that's switching modes. Okay, I got it. I understand. Okay, now that's that's over there. There we go. Okay, great. That's perfect. Done the, done. Now we have cube is going to be a lot harder. Mm, push the cube. Cube does not like to be pushed. Come here, cube. Come over here. Cube. Okay, great. Come here, cube. Great. Uh, I think that's good to line up. Okay. Did that work? Uh, not quite. Keep going, cube. Keep going. Yo, let me tell you, I'm not good at these puzzles. This is like a more extreme portal. Can I just push it? Yes, this is easier. Okay, we gotta get it all the way so we get the, the get the motion of it going up. It is a very cool looking blaster. Yeah, I think this was modeled in house. I think uh, Mitchell modeled this one. He did a very good job, and I think it might have been textured. Um, bar, of course, of course, Eek, maybe. I think so. I ha I'll have to double check the credits. Well, that didn't work. Let me tell you that I'm not, I'm just not good at games, guys. Don't like, <laughs> it's just me. Okay, hold on, one more try. Oh no, go that way. Oh. <sighs> Is this it? Maybe this way. Okay, 
value. Gonna point it at the corner, maybe I can get it to go. This wall! <laughs> You're doing better than what you could- I don't really think so, I don't think that's true. I almost had it. This one, this puzzle is hard. And I know it's the last puzzle. And it's just difficult. Because there's that thing in the wall. Okay, one more time. If I'm over here, I can just like grab it. All right, well, this is this game, and maybe you can do better than I can. <laughs> it's a good game, it's got like some secret duck ending that I'm not. Now you just, oh, you want me to pass it? All right, fine. Now that you said that, I'm going to try really hard to pass it. I still got time. I got a little bit. <laughs> pass the levels for us. Oh, my God. I don't know if I'm going to pass the level for you. I don't think it's supposed to be as hard as I make it, but I'm just not. Ooh. Let me tell you. We've seen me play games on this channel. <laughs> not. Are you gonna go up? Oh. Wow. I love it. I'm so I'm so glad. I'm so glad I'm able to do this to myself. Move over. Okay, great. Let's try this again. Go! You got it, I got it. Oh, you so thank you for the encouragement. I would like to do justice to my team members' games, but <laughs> like oh, so Maybe the trick is that I have to Oh my god, not do that. Go forward a little bit. Can you just... Can you go? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just gonna... I enjoy, I enjoy the thing. It'll get there eventually.
Wait, is a will is a way. It does not want to move. <laughs> I feel like I'm supposed to. I have to get it like, you know, it'll roll. Give it enough momentum to roll. What if I... I'm going to try one more idea. One more idea. Well, that didn't uh, set up. Hold on. <laughs> I gotta try it again. What, I have to execute it better than what, what I just did. Get over here. Box. Get over here. Box. Box. Okay. One more time. Didn't quite work as I wanted. I'm trying to give it momentum to just shoot itself across the gap is what I, I'm trying to do. Of course, it doesn't, and when it does that, nothing matters. This box is going to be the death of me. It's about to be the death of me. Oh, and I can't handle the box. We're done with this. <laughs> I am sorry. I can't be. I can't be my 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 teammate's game. But this is bite size bonanza. You're free to download it, and maybe you'll have a better time of beating it than I will. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna move on to the next one in our list. Here's bite size bonanza, uh, specifically. Yeah, could not, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. The box couldn't, could not outsmite the box, could not complete the, uh, the, the, the duck challenge. I failed the duck. But next one we have is a game called Relationships in Repair, which was built for a game jam. Uh, and this one, uh, we got Will, Jimmy, Bailey, and Michaela. And this one is, uh, you work with a friend or by yourself to mend a broken relationship. Each level will go through the process of repairing relationships with fun puzzles that also act as metaphors. Uh, so I'm going to be playing it, and you also, this one, you can download the OST. So I'm going to be playing it solo because that's just how it goes. So give me a second. So I hope you guys are enjoying the showcase so far. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions or would like any more information. It's pretty deep. It's a good metaphor. It's a good metaphorical game, though. It is it's taking a moment to open. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Mod. Uh, not sure why it's taking a minute to to open. Let's try it again. It worked yesterday, mind you. Uh, Maybe I'll unzip it again. Oh, there it goes. Really working the computer hard right now. I think I opened it twice. I opened it three times. Excuse me, game. <laughs> there we go. Good old reliable technology, you would love it. Alright, but this is Relationships and Repair. <laughs> so I'm going to be playing it. So you control the blue with W W A S D. Hi. You control red with the keyboard. Hey. 
and then you try to get to the center to essentially repair your relationship. You wanted to talk about us? It's long overdue. But will it be worth it? I think so. Do you? Undecided. I don't know. And that, that, is, a, that is a moment we need to open up. Oh, I'm trapped. I'm trapped over here. So it looks like red has to hit the blue switch. I feel like I'm worthless when I talk to you. And then allows blue to move on. And then still tuck is trapped again. But I want to fix this. I feel like you never listen to me. You need to listen if you want to fix this. It's, it's a good story about... I know we can work things out. I guess I need to listen to you more. And I need to make sure you know how much you're worth. I guess we can both do things to improve. I'm sorry. Oh, we got a new level with some with some thorns here. Family drama. I'm stressed from work. Okay, great. We can continue. Looks like I gotta cut this. New friends. I gotta cut all the thorns, so maybe this is old friends. Maybe it's a metaphor for untangling. It's not because of them. It is between us. Having the thorns that are stuck in your side, maybe, from outside influences, and that adds a gap in between yourselves. Those ones, you, you know, you take outside stress on your partner, which is not good. I feel closer. I think it's working. But the hardest part is yet to come. The truth. Oh, this one's a little bit heavy. Oh, I can't. Okay, so I can't. We can't go through the purple. It's like a prison. I used you. Ah, uh, okay, the light takes it out. Red, that's pretty dark. Ah, uh, okay, I'm gonna have to time this right because I can't get off the button. I wonder what happens if I can- can I get stuck in here? Let me just proceed to break the game. Can I get stuck? Oh god. <laughs> this is not the time to be testing things, Megan. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Okay, great. I'm out. Oh, I gotta cut. I lied to you. Gotta cut that one. Oh, I have to do it for myself. For both of us. There we go. Man, the music in this one is ominous. Got stuck there. The truth hurts. But it also heals. You have to travel through the night to reach dawn. Oh, look at this tree. We're here together. A relationship is a tree. You can plant the seed, but it needs water, it needs sunlight, it needs maintenance. Open up, cut out external forces, reveal the truth, and grow. Together. Ah, oh, the orchestra was about to kick in. That was about to be a good moment. <laughs> We'll wait, we'll wait for the orchestra to kick in. And there's a story behind, you can't hear the music? Oh, let me tell it, let me turn it, I'm sorry. There it is, sorry about that. I'm sorry, the, the music fluctuates between us, but you can hear this song. But yeah, the, I'll play it again. Boom, <laughs> I cut out the orchestra again. I'll play it again. Will this speed run? Speed run for the audio. Hello! Let's see how much I can constantly move both hands at the same time. You wanted to talk? 
It is an amazing soundtrack. It's long overdue. But will it be worth it? I think so. And do you? I don't know. This is kind of a... We need to open up. And this one's about opening barriers, I think. This is, this is one of those healing... This is a good message um, in a game. Because definitely I've had relationships that haven't that have ended poorly and have needed to be talked about to fix it um and you know it takes a while you know it can work it out and everybody has things to improve on but talking about what how things went wrong is really a good idea you know it's gonna hurt and people need time to heal but you have to talk in order to heal We got like a bongo jazzy soundtrack from here. I'm trying to do both at the same time, excuse me. Yeah, there we go! <laughs> Funny enough, the game started out where a wizard turns things back into a pear. Oh, that's what the pear tree is from. Thank you. We got a dev in the chat here. This song is a good one, too. You can get the OST from the Itch page, which I'll link in a second. Uh, that's why that's why the pear tree is stuff. But yeah, this one's got the ominous tone. Juju here, and it's a very serious topic they're talking about, how they mistreated each other. To reach the dawn! Reaching the dawn! I'm gonna wait till the violins kick up now, because it'll be a good moment. Oh my god, I've lost control of my hands. There we go. Relationship is a tree. You can plant the seed, but it needs water. It needs sunlight. It needs maintenance. Open up. Cut out external forces. Reveal the truth. And grow. on the music and I didn't know if there was a line afterwards or not. No, okay, there was one more. <laughs> there it is. That's Relationships and Repairs, though. It's a very good game. Uh, I do enjoy that one a lot, so if you'd like to play that one yourself or get the OST, you can get both from the itch here. And then the next one on our showcase is we have Room Room Taco. This was also another game jam game that was polished up after the game jam. Uh, this is developed for Global Game Jam 2020, and it's made for the Oculus. Uh, it's made by 48 Hours, and many of these wonderfully food-related people. We got Joseph Butterbeard, the Silver. Ben Spicy Johnson, Alberto Drumstick Carello, Jackson Broche Bastian, Blaine Crispy Carrick, see, Karthik Grillmarks Chardin, Mitchell Well Dunning, and then Nico Nacho Kent. So this one's good. So I'm going to boot this one up and go back into VR so I'm not going to be able to see the chat for a hot second, but I'll check it every now and then. So give me a whole... There's Vroom Vroom. Okay. 
Okay, see, so let me fix up VR really quick, get that all settled. Okay, great, and then I'm gonna start. Here we go. Do an audio check in a minute, so let me know if it you can hear it. As I read instructions. All right, this should be a good level. I'm also short in this game, which is really unfortunate for me. But, you know, I'm short in real life, so this is probably accurate. <laughs> so what we gotta do is that we're running a hot ta taco truck on a highway. So we get our order, and then we can put stuff from the fridge into this little cutting thing. Uh, it's examining with this tomato. And then it cuts itself up, so I'm gonna prepare some stuff for myself. There we go. I'm <laughs> gonna prepare it all. Prepping, this is what prep work means. Alright, and then we got, we also got the meat over here. So I'm gonna take that, put that over there. Okay, I don't know where my, there's my ladles. Okay, I got my ladles. Gotta get ready for the day. The cheese is still working. And then I gotta get, now I got some money. And then I gotta, I gotta get some nacho sauce. So, all right, let me double check chat really quick. Also, here's a good sky view up here. <laughs> Sounds good? Your yeah, tacos are great. I haven't had a taco in a while. But let's make some tacos and nachos. There we go. Hello, would you like a taco with some, you know what's really great it's about this concept is that we're just on a highway, so obviously we gotta get, give it to people, and what better way than just throw it at them. There we go. Good money, give me my money. Ah, oh, $10, that was, a, that was an expensive taco. This one's already got some beef left over. That's handy for me. There we go, we got two. I need some cheese. And I need some tomatoes. There we go. There, I got it. All right, we need taco with beef. I don't know what happened to my other ladle, but that's perfectly fine. What's great, what's good about here's your taco. I gotta get, with my bowls? My bowls. This is still good. It's still good. Oh, I think I put too many chips in here. Well, that's a little broken. <laughs> there you go. I put too many chips in there. Bowl, come here. Cheese. There we go. Oh, where's my money? <laughs> What's good about this one is that texture-wise, what they did for the textures, I know, is that each of these is like an invisible layer. I think that gets activated depending on what needs to be added. There we go. We got cheese cheese so after it hits a trigger box it turns into tomato give me the tomato where did it go it turns into the diet why can't i put the tomato on this taco oh, do i have i have too many toppings there we go okay hold on what's this taco get it out of your bowl that's a... some cheese i lost my taco is this my taco I don't know what taco this is. Oh, this is... Got some extra cheese. I have too many tacos! Hold on. Let me try it again. Ah, oh, this is fire! Ah! Why is the fridge on fire? Okay, great. Where'd my ladle go? There it is. And also because it's on a highway, uh, stuff sometimes moves. Oh my god, the order is different. I took too long. I lost the customer. Here's your hot dog. It's not. It's not a hot dog. It's a taco. Oh my God! There's too many. Why is that have tomato in it? This one's clean. Okay, great. You just want like a shell and cheese? It's very, oh God! <laughs> it's a very. He really violently threw that at me. It's a very odd combo. Um, I think I gotta. Oh my God! <laughs> Excuse me, food. What are you doing? 
Thank you. I lost all my money on the highway. This is oh god. <sighs> so it's uh, you know this is, this is great. What do we got in this one? Nothing. Oh no, there's more shells. Um. Any cheese? Ah, oh, fire! <laughs> Where'd my ladles go? Oh my god, there's a knife on the ground. There's multiple knives on the ground, and I've lost both my ladles. They're both gone. <laughs> I don't know where they are. There's too many. There's too much cabbage. Ah, I can't do it. I don't have a ladle. I hold on. Maybe cabbage, get away. Get out of here. Get! Well, I don't know. Oh my god, he's very impatient, but I don't know what to do, and this is on fire, and I lost. There's my ladle! Oh god, come here! Ah! Ah! <laughs> come on. Uh, just a meat taco, that's fine. That's fine. Meat taco is perfectly easy to do. Great. Get in there. Thank you for the money. I just need some... <laughs> Why are there so many balls? Oh god! <laughs> Get out of my cheat, my... I don't have any chips because of the tacos! I have no chips. There's too much food. I can't do it. Oh god, there's my other ladle, I guess. How do I get my chips aren't spawning? Which is really sad and unfortunate. Oh my god. It's a never ending. I'm <laughs> still smelling like some chips. Fantastic, here we go. Ah, oh my god, there's fire. Here, there you go, take that. Did you not get it? Oh no. Oh my god. Oh. Um, chips? I don't have any chips, man. I don't have any chips. There's too many balls. Get out of here. <laughs> the tacos are overrunning. The tacos have taken over. Okay, great, but I don't have any chips. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get buried alive by tacos. <laughs> I'm sorry, I also can't see. Just get out of here, tacos! Because I don't have any chips and the lettuces just keep spawning. I can't stop the lettuce! Oh! <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't do it! <laughs> Excuse me, tacos. Are there any bowls of chips anywhere? No. No, there's not. Alright, man. Can I throw stuff in here? Oh, I can't! Get out of my truck! Get my cabbages! Have my cabbages! Oh my god, the cheese! I don't know, I don't have any chips. <laughs> Just, I'm the new cabbage man. The cabbage woman. I don't have any chips for you, but this is the wrong truck. I'm out of chips! What is something out? Why are the bulls up there? Oh no, <laughs> what's on fire? All right, I think this is good enough. <laughs> we can't, there we go. Oh. <laughs> Poor monster hands, even if they're broken. I think there's a lot more broken than just hands. <laughs> it's mostly this, my constant shell ordering. I've ordered way too many shells this week. <laughs> oh my god, the bolts. <laughs> Oh my god, now the fridge is on fire. Where's my fire? There we go. You know, I can do this. This is great. Let me just... Let me go sit in my, uh... There we go. Yep, I'm just be consumed by food now. <laughs> there we go. I am... I will become the bug snack. I'll become part of Snack Truck Island. <laughs> what did you want, sir? I can't give you nachos. Please go away. Alright, anyway, I think that's enough of- that's enough of Room Room Taco. Oh my god, the bowls. <laughs> oh my 
god, this is a disaster. Alright, alright, that's good enough. <laughs> alright, I'm good with that now. <laughs> I, of course, did. I did make an avatar that laughed there, but no reference. <laughs> yeah, it's so hectic. You wish people just throw money at you? No, they gotta. They only throw money at you when you pay them. And then if you do a good job, when they pay you, and then if you do a good job, they'll just throw money at you. I do make tacos. Yeah, I was just making a lot of tacos. Tomatoes don't go on tacos. Tomatoes do go on tacos. I wouldn't get a good sanitation grade. I'm pretty sure it'd be okay. You know, I can do you ever see Bob's Burgers? I'll just outrun the police like Bob's Burgers. <laughs> the, not Bob's Burger, Big Top. Big Top Burger animation series on YouTube. It's really funny. It's really great. But that's Room Room Taco. That one's an enjoyable ride. <laughs> did I did I did I get v version two? I think I did. Yeah, I had version two. <laughs> the spawning. Alright, we got one more game that I can't I can't play me Messenger because I do not have a Android and it's not I don't have a quest so unfortunately but you can this one is on your phone we'll watch the trailer for that one so let me let me get to the uh we will watch the trailer for meme messenger uh you can play this one this one uh if you have an Android phone you'll be able to download it uh here from the itch page right here and this one, it, well, the trailer will ex explain itself, so we're gonna, gonna, gonna watch that. But yeah, that's me, Messenger. So it's a good game. It's uh, it's for your. Please don't. Please stop. Um, it's good it's for your phone. So you just battle people with memes, and it's a good time. I haven't had a chance to play this one personally, but it's got a really good soundtrack. Also by Bailey Atwood. So it's all, it's all good. But the final game we're gonna play, show off, is called In Your Face, which was de developed during a spring game jam for 2020, and the theme was Interface. So. See, so we got WSA to move, left to sprint, shoot, aim, reload. Okay. So let me load this one up. I haven't played this one yet, and I haven't seen a whole lot of it, so this is going to be my first time playing this game. Um, and then we have... And then we're going to go over and try to see some current development. And I know I'm running late, but we're just going to run a little bit late. <laughs> it's, how, it's how things go. <laughs> Here we go. Audio should be fine. Okay, it's a little quiet in the game. So I'm just gonna turn up desktop audio really quick. Amazingly, that didn't do anything. So, hold on. Alright, it's just quiet. Well, that's fine. Alright, so who we are in this, I don't know, space? Space. We're in space. Sprint, 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 zombie! Hello, zombie! Oh my god, oh my god, oh, I don't like this. Oh my god, the stretchy arms are not okay. Oh, looks like we took the reloader camp mechanic. All of you need to, oh look, you dropped the thing. Oh my god, don't give me a hug. I don't want a hug. Get- I do not- do not consent to the hug. What is this? Uh... I don't- I don't know what they are, but they explode when I step on them, so that's pretty great. ZOOM! Can I 
I do something with this? Oh my god, I have a gold- I have a shotgun! Gold shotgun! Absolutely. I will take that. But the sound effects are great. Ooh, ooh, boof! Oh, I'm dominant. Maybe this is ammo or something? I don't know. Boop. I don't really have an ammo bar, though. So it doesn't really matter. Boop. There we go. Alright. I know there's a chest somewhere. I just gotta find it. Oh, God. Hello? No, I'm gonna go this way. Excuse me. Excuse me. There is a ch I don't know where the chest is. I know it's- I know it- maybe it's up here. Let's go up here. Excuse me! Oh, there is something to get. I don't- ooh, I know I'm gonna find it. I'm just gonna sprint everywhere and then I'm gonna find- Hello? Hello? Whoop. Maybe it's this way. Maybe- 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 oh, The map's not that big. Is it that big? Maybe it's bigger than I thought. Boop. Wow, this is just like an endless stream of thing. I know there's a way. I have, I have things. How did I switch my weapon? Ah, okay, great. Let me just go out into the void. Wow, I really did just go out into the void. I reached level zero. Oh wait, that's oh, okay. <laughs> Hold on, let me try that again. Reach the end of each level by touching the orange case in a fortress with red pillars. Okay, I gotta go find the fortress with red pillars. Hold on, let me try that again. <laughs> this is why you read instructions on the itch page before you download the game. Nope. I gotta find the fortress with red, red pillars. Somewhere. Uh these all have gold pillars. It's gonna I'm just gonna run around until I find it. Cause I don't think anything can happen to me at this point in time, so it's fine. Hello? 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 Okay, we got silver pillars. We got Hello? Maybe this way? Hold on, it's not this way. Ah, here we go. Can I have this? Oh jeez. Oh, I got a health bar. Well, that sucks, I think. Oh, I respawned. Okay, well, I have a health bar now, which I think is actually not good, because now, now I can I actually have to kill things. Well, they're probably gonna kill me. I don't know where all the enemies are. Okay, great, no enemies, that's fine. Hello? Can I take that? Thanks. Hello? Ooh, red pillar. There we go. Ooh, excuse me. Whee! Alright, here we go. Another one. We got... Oh, I have a map now. A mini map in the top right. Alright, great. That's cool. So yeah, the main gimmick of this game is that you just can't keep... Can <laughs> You get like, you continue to get like an arbitrary number of interface to uh, as you complete the levels. And obviously you get more uh, don't you grab me with your long arms. This is okay, well they drop health packs now, so I'll just take all of it. Fantastic, thanks. Um, okay, let's see. Nothing here. Let's go this way. I feel like it spawns in a different location every time, and I just don't know where I'm going. Hello, I'm gonna go this way, thanks. Well, there's a corridor over there. I get- no. Ooh, enemy. Oh, okay. Well, that's kinda neat. I can see where the enemies are, at least. This is actually pretty handy. Oh, there's the red over there. I saw it on the mini. The mini map is great. I don't know how this map is generated. Oh, I got a radical. Well, that's always ha handy. So this game.
game's neat. I'm gonna play it for like a couple more rounds, see what a few more of the UI are. Let's go with this way. Anything, any any danger in here? Doesn't look like it. Hello, how you doing, sir? Wow, you really don't do well in the bumpy terrain. I don't see any red on my map. I'm gonna go there. Oh god, I've, oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no, no. how do I get in? Oh, I backed myself in the corner. Well, I'm gonna go this way. Hold on, I gotta get over there. It's over there. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, no. Okay, great. Let's make our way back this way. Oh, hello. How you doing? Don't touch. Just let me finish the level. This way, maybe. There we go. Yeah, I think it's randomly generated, which is pretty neat. I don't know how they did that, but they did. Experience points. Do I have? Do I? Do I get? Oh, I get a hundred. I've killed twenty-six of them. All right. So that's in your face, and you can just kind of keep going forever. Escape is not working, so I'm gonna just exit out of it but feel free to play that on the itch page um but that is all or download that and play that yourself see how far you can get i think we only got to like level three or four um but yeah that's a that was a pretty fun one uh it's made by we got griffin alberto kathik and brady so yeah that is all of our games currently on the itch.io page so we would appreciate it, you know if you want to take some time in playing it that's totally good or you can email us um, and check out uh, uh, vggcncsu at gmail.com. But for now, we're going to actually go over to uh, Discord and we're going to chat with one of our developers who's currently working on um, who's currently working on one of his games. So, boo doo doo. Okay, let me switch over. Hold on. Time to like to navigate. There we go. There we go. All right. Hello, Mitchell. Hi there. Hello. How are you doing? I'm currently switching over over things. There we go. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, working on Unity projects here. All right. What what type of what Unity project are you working on? I am working on Scare Maze currently. Let me go back to Unity. Uh, so this is like our little development thing right now. I am trying to get, uh, I can show this off real quick. Uh, I'm trying to get this particle system right there to play whenever I possess a pumpkin. So the idea behind this game is uh, you play as a, a cute little ghost. It's too cute to scare anyone, realistically. He's so adorable. he's too adorable with his gigantic eyes. Um, so he's got to possess creepy pumpkins and scarecrows. Um to then be able to scare the uh, people exploring this the maze. So I can actually go in and play uh, our current version. Here we go. Uh, all right. Play. Let me actually maximize that on play real quick. Hold on. There we go. Oh, OK, neat. Yeah, so if you get caught in the flashlight, you'll start to lose health. Mm -hmm. You only have like 100 health, um, and you'll spook camper. Uh, so he's spooked for that little red bar's amount of time. Oh, to, okay. uh, to win, I need to scare all of the uh, campers, or whoever they are, maze runners, I guess, in the, uh, the maze. So I have to possess a pumpkin, and then I can hit space to scare them if it doesn't do that. The uh, camper has to be within a certain uh, radius, though. So I think he's just outside of it, and he's, like, bugging out. <laughs> so let me find one that, like, yeah, this guy's going to come right next to this one. I think. Come here. And then, yeah, oh. the ragdolls. Wow, he's dead. Uh, <laughs> the, um, uh, our, the screams are courtesy of Bailey, who you've mentioned quite a bit on mm -hmm. here. Um, and the music is as well. 
Okay, I can kind of hear the music. I don't think I heard the screen yet, but I do slightly hear the music. There's probably a louder one. It, I'll see if I can go possess the scarecrow. Um, because that allows you to like walk around and still be able to spook people, but mm -hmm. it's supposed to be only on like a time limit. We haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> so it's unlimited scare right now. Come on, why aren't you moving? Uh, I'm getting a null reference exception. That's why. Okay. Welcome to game development, everybody. <laughs> Look at all these errors that are updating every second. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> It does have good creepy background music, so yeah, Bailey does a wonderful job. Yeah. But this looks really neat. You got that particle system on the ghost, ghost looking, looking real good, mm -hmm. and everything. I, uh, I actually coded a cool shade. This is in game. Let me go to the scene here. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the behind the scenes here. All right. So yeah. So how we have this set up is we have these are are possessable pumpkins. So they have this little radius that you have to be within to be able to possess or scare anybody. Mm, okay. um, these, these larger yellow circles with the uh, red circles inside of them, or spheres, mm. I guess, are the waypoints that are uh, our nav mesh agents. So we have this, uh, the entire plane here is a big like grid that's set up. And uh, all these different points are uh, like waypoints that are agents which are these uh are player or human persons here okay so by born. waypoints do you mean like that's where the ai goes yeah that's where the ai is gonna okay, go so, so they're that's... gonna they're they're gonna lock on to a near way a nearby waypoint and then go to that stand there for a second and then find a new one and go to that one and okay. i think the larger radius here is so like they can uh search for other ones that are nearby okay so if you're here you should this one's bordering uh the same like yellow square so you could go here next i don't know if that makes any sense no it does sorry i was adjusting the discord really quick <laughs> as i uh the the obs window i was cutting off a little bit but i'm fixing it but yeah that makes sense so you have the um okay so you have your little ghosts and each of the AI, the little uh, campers goes to one of the different uh, little red circles, and that's how they map their path. Yeah, and they... they'll rock around. Sometimes they get stuck with each other. I think we could update it so that it works a bit better, but we're trying to meet the uh, the awards deadline tonight. To <laughs> yeah, we're every... yeah, we got some crunch time going in club right now as everyone's trying to fix up their games to submit for the VGDC awards. Um <laughs> But it's looking real good so far. So I guess yeah, what you. inspired you guys to do like this top down perspective, do you think? Uh I I think the top down perspective came from like the idea of doing a maze. Mm -hmm. Uh the original plan, we got pumpkin as a sort of the theme for this game jam. This was last Halloween in twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. uh, when we did this. And I think I had suggested the idea of like a scarecrow um like stealth game where you like hop between different things and then someone else Came up with the idea of like a ghost possessing jack-o'-lanterns um and so we kind of merged the two ideas and uh since we had it and set it in like a corn hay maze the top-down perspective seemed like it would just be the best option okay yeah that seemed that flows well so earlier you mentioned something about the ghost shader that you were going to talk about yes so this is um just the normal ghost like this is a little bit harder to do without with uh just normal materials because you just get this kind of flat looking thing mm -hmm. so to do this i actually i had to spend all last night switching the entire project over to uh, the high def or not the high definition the universal render pipeline so i can make oh. this <laughs> no <laughs> but it basically just applies a fresnel effect which is um if you ever look at like uh any really any object uh like this reflective surface though is more accurate you'll see a lot more like white shining reflection on the edges mm -hmm. than you will in the center so if you like look at a uh like a shiny ball you'll see the color of the ball if you look at it directly but if you look towards the edge you'll see more of like a white reflection because mm, that's where okay. the light like the angle of the light. So applying that with some color gives this sort of like rounded out uh, shape here. Okay, so is it basically a Fennel effect with like two from a transparency to a color? Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, I can literally pull it up right here. Let me... Yeah, I got Fresnel and then a color. I multiply them together and then uh, I have this set to uh, so that it's transparent. Oh, and that's it. okay. 
Oh yeah, this is the new Unity uh, Blueprint update. Was that what that is? Or if yeah, not, it's, I think... uh, it's shade. It's similar to Blueprints. It's shader graphs. So mm -hmm. normally you'd have to go into like a Visual Studio style code mm -hmm. and actually type all the code out in like a specific coding language called HLSL. But uh, with the high de or not the high definition, the high definition lets you do it too. But it, we're using the universal rendering pipeline. You can kind of like build out these nodes. So I can I have all these different node types that I can kind of search through and find stuff to add different effects. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think Unity is also building a normal a blueprint pipeline similar to the Unreal to import mm -hmm. for a lot of Narn programmers, basically. So that will make programming much easier, too, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to try that out, um, at least for my basic projects. And then on the art side of things, I think for the programming, we had Aaron and Jack, and I guess me, because I've been updating it recently, uh, and Will. And mm -hmm. they took care, and Bailey, actually. I think Bailey did, uh, I think everyone kind of just did everything. <laughs> Bailey did the audio and the uh, the people. I took care of the ghost and the scarecrow. This is like the old scarecrow. I'm making a new one in Blender. I can actually pull that up. Oh, that would be great. Ah, so many tabs. A lot of tabs. Yeah, it is. It is really cool how every to see how everything comes together behind the scenes of a game because most people play a game, but then nobody really understands how games are made. <laughs> so. Yeah. So here's here's the uh, the the scarecrow. I have it rigged with a skeleton essentially. And I have the skeleton set up so like this. This is a heel. When I move the heel up, it'll try to move this uh, center point here towards the knee uh, vector. So that allows me to really quickly have like a uh, knee bends and elbow bends oh, without okay. having to calculate it. So it's um, like a like an IK rig essentially. Mm -hmm. Is that what they did they call it that in Blender? Yeah, it's it's an IK rig. Okay. It's uh if I go to the actual bone here, it's yeah, IK. Okay. <laughs> and uh let's see. I I don't have any animations for this guy yet, but that's what I'm gonna be doing soon. But I can just kind of go over to the animation tab. I can plot keyframes and have him animated. Once I have him animated, I can export him into the, uh, the Unity project, and he'll be able to move around like everybody else. So that's where I'm at. Well, fantastic! That sounds that sounds great. So is that is the animating the scarecrow going to be like? Is that the last major hurdle you have, at least for fixing it up? Or I think I'm touching uh, I'm touching around with like the ghost possession particles effects and stuff right now. Like uh -huh. I think I might want to add like a little sweating particle effect to the uh, the characters <laughs> whenever they get scared, so they like little little beads of sweat like fly off of their heads. That's hilarious. <laughs> um... some, some good visual feedback for the player. Mm hmm And so then I think once I do that and get this possession so like you know it's very obvious which one you're possessing, uh, which pumpkin you're possessing, uh, and then get the scarecrow able to move around because I think we just saw that was bugging out, though it does I did work earlier. Um I think that'll be the last thing. And I think I can get that done by tonight. I have plenty of time. Yeah, it's only four. This still still got a lot of hours left. <laughs> Well, okay, cool. Thank you so much, Mitchell, for showing us all of your work. Uh, I'd be excited to, to see how it turns out in the future. So, you know, let me know when you guys get a proper build. Probably be a summer project of us getting it on, updating the itch again. Yep. Uh, thank you for having me. It was good okay. to be able to show this off. And uh, credit to Aaron and uh, Aaron King, Jack Grace, uh, Bailey Atwood, and Will Carpenter, who all worked on this. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing game. All right. I'll talk to you later, Mitchell. Yep, see ya. Alrighty. So that is basically the VGDC showcase. Yeah, it was it was it was really fun. It's good for me to play through all the games because I haven't played through all of them either. So it's it's good to explore what my teammates have developed um but also it's it's nice to show off game development to people because like i mentioned um a lot of gamers love games but a lot of you know, us don't know how it's made unless you know really get into trying to program do art and model and <laughs> do a lot of work like game development's a lot of field and it's very multidisciplinary um is a word you're going to hear often about it you got art then that can be 2d or 3d we've seen both today it can have, you got music, and there's also sound design that we've seen in both instances. There's 
uh, the actual programming of the game, which was what you, uh, Mitchell showed very briefly there. And um, yeah, it's great. And then there's also, you can do particle effects. So usually sometimes the making it pretty and the lighting is uh, its own job in the industry. There's um, There's people who have to promote games. There's people who have to uh, direct the games and get everybody to get their stuff done. It's very extensive, and there's a lot of opportunity to kind of be into the field. But yeah, so yeah, we at the Video Game Development Club uh, try really hard to make game development accessible to everybody and at least provide resources for everybody who are interested in making games to make games. So it was a pleasure to be able to show this off with the libraries today. Uh, <laughs> it's some games got a lot of man hours into it. Like, it is crazy, and then some games really don't. Like some games you can make in a weekend, and they're solid. Like Hitcone is one example. It's a solid game that was made in basically one weekend. Um, and other games like Red Dead and popular AAA take years of development. Um, it's all a very complicated process. But yeah, it's been a pleasure talking and sharing on the games today. Uh, again, I'm going to drop, this is the website for the Video Game Development Club. If anybody would like to email us or, you know, want to know about, yeah, or you want to know what's upcoming with us, we have our calendar on here. And we're always meeting at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights. Do We do have it on Zoom, but we'll be resuming fall operations in the VR lab or somewhere in the library uh, come fall. Um, but yeah, <laughs> 60 pages of writing is nothing. I know, we've written the visual novel I mentioned before was literally 60 pages of writing, and it was three of us writing in one Google Doc, and then the programmer copying and pasting. It was two of us writing in the Google Doc, and then the programmer copying and pasting what we wrote to put into the engine. <laughs> it was That was an achievement. Um, <laughs> I hope to play that soon, too. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the libraries for allowing me to share the work of my club um, and just for allowing me to lead this co uh, collaboration opportunity. Uh, look out for more uh, collaborations from the libraries and various other streams. Uh, we'll be resuming more normal schedules and guest streams throughout you know, the rest of the semester. So continue to come back. Usually it's from 6 to 8. Um, over the weekdays and then like two to four on Friday is my normal stream. But thank you everybody for watching today and hanging out with me as I played some games and I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Bye bye! Let's see. I don't have a thank you screen. Well thank you. Bye!